The Dingo Pup continues Scamper Camper's famous off-road camping and exploring traditions. It's light yet strong and astutely put together. Within a handful of minutes you'll be able to tell the people who built this love camping and know all about spending quality time in the Australian outback. The compact pup is designed for off-road touring and as such it packs plenty of muscle underneath. But more than that, it comes with heaps of Australian made ingenuity and detail like this Rawcon tent pole management system, massive storage lockers, a generously proportioned and adaptable kitchen slide out, fully plumbed water for the kitchen and also the shower ensuite, it definitely punches above its weight. Inside, while camping in a stunning spot like this, you really wouldn't want to be anywhere else. It's bright, breezy, comfortable and surprisingly roomy. You've got a double bed up front and this dinette area quickly converts to another double. What more could you want? But let's hear from our four expert judges. The Scamper Camper Dingo Pup featured a number of well thought out design details. How did it grab you, Ellie? Look, I really liked the uh, Scamper Camper Dingo Pup. I thought it was a great little unit. There was a few nice elements to it that I particularly enjoyed. The fold-out kitchen, which was really versatile. You could move the two burner stove either to the end of the bench or vice versa, and it folded up into a nice small little slide. And the other thing I really liked about this one was the insulated fridge cabinet. 16 grand was a big attraction. I mean, it's fantastic. It's half of anything else that we've seen so far. Man, that is good. <laughs> The other thing that would appeal to a lot of people is it's 1600 GVM. Even that, over 400 kilos of payload. Yeah, this is a camper that's directed that, at that market. This is a scale down version of your standard forward fold camper trailer. It only had the one battery, but they've got a dual battery setup coming. Everything you need to go camping in the toughest environments, but this has got a capacity of being towed by smaller vehicles and, and that's where this is aimed and very successfully hits that market. With a smaller unit like this, obviously the storage isn't as good as some of the bigger units we've seen. They've compensated with the soft storage bag that you can attach to the top of the roof of the camper when you're travelling, which is, you know, makes a big difference. What we saw yesterday in the afternoon, we had this little contest of setting them up and in four minutes and 27 seconds, disconnected from the car, tent out, stabilise the legs down, kitchen out, sitting in a chair with a beer in their hand. And it was really comfortable, that campsite was like quite beautiful where it was set up and did, what did you think of the inside there when you were sitting in there testing it out? Oh, it's great. You've got the table in there, you've got not the optional kids room, There's the, it comes with an ensuite. You get two gas points. Would you take it off grid, Ron? Yes, I would. I mean, it mightn't have the capability of those bigger rigs. But I don't know about you, Ron, but I have a lot more confidence in the fact that they're full-length chassis rails as well. It's the first time I've really taken much notice of that, and I thought that was a really great idea. The other thing I liked about that full-length is you haven't got the step-down for the A-frame joining into the to the main subfront, and uh, therefore you improve uh, you know, your ramp-over angles and all that sort of stuff. Okay, there we have it. The judges have given it a glowing endorsement. Plenty of ingenuity, a perfect compact off-roader. <laughs> <laughs>